How's it going everyone? I hope you're doing well. So like I said in my singleness video, I've used dating apps in the past. Some I still use today, others I don't. I wanted to make this video to share how Christians should approach using dating apps, as well as share my personal experiences with them. I'm gonna start by answering the questions, is it okay for Christians to use dating apps? And what does the Bible say about it? Then share some dating app observations that I've made as a Christian since using them, which will hopefully give you some insight into how they work and help you decide whether or not there's something that you wanna try out. And finish by sharing my personal experiences with the three dating apps that I've used, which are Bumble, Hinge, and Upward. All right, so what does the Bible say about dating apps? Nothing, since neither dating apps nor dating existed during biblical times. But even though there's no direct condemnation of using dating apps in scripture, the use of them still seems generally frowned upon by Christians, especially those from the older generations, at least in my experience. I think since dating and swiping apps like Tinder have the reputation of being used for hookups, which is not incorrect, people see that as their exclusive use. So while they can be used for hookups, dating apps can also just connect you with others and help you meet new people, namely people you want to date. The model itself is neutral and becomes either sinful or God-honoring depending on how we use it. Another source of contention that some Christians have with dating apps is the idea that by using them, you're taking matters into your own hands and choosing to not be patient with God's timing in finding a partner, especially if you're a woman. I can understand this viewpoint given the fact that the use of dating apps is relatively new compared to the long history of the church and the traditional manner of meeting a partner, and new things will always clash with tradition. But still, there's nothing inherently sinful or out of line with God's will about using dating apps. Proverbs 18.22 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. For men, God doesn't call us to sit and wait for a wife. He calls us to go out and find her. While a lot of men find their wives at school, at church, on mission trips, what have you, now, through the power of modern technology, we have the opportunity to find our wives online through dating apps. It's just one more way that God can uniquely write our story. And for women who are often told to take a more passive stance in finding a relationship, I like to think of Ruth. To show Boaz that she was interested in him, Ruth lied down with him. She didn't take the lead in the relationship, but she did make the first move. She was very forward with her feelings. Scripture doesn't tell women that they can't be proactive in their wait for a godly husband. So in that sense, it doesn't forbid them from using dating apps. It's just important that if you are a woman on dating apps, the man still pursues you and takes the lead in the relationship as it grows. What matters most is how we use dating apps. If you feel like God is calling you to a season of singleness because he's trying to grow you as a follower of him, or he's trying to teach you something, but you're impatient so you download Bumble to try to meet someone anyway, then yes, dating apps are causing you to sin. But if you're in a season of singleness and you pray to God asking if dating apps are maybe something you should try out, and you don't get an explicit no in response if he leaves that door open, then until he closes it, you should use dating apps with confidence. But like with any relationship pursuit, you also need to engage them with wisdom, love, patience, and honesty. All right, so now that we know that dating apps are an option for Christians in general, it's time to see if they should be an option for you. I'm gonna give some insight into the dating app culture, talk about some of the ways that meeting people through dating apps differs from meeting people traditionally, and share with you some things you should expect when using dating apps. So first I'll say that on dating apps, people are going to judge you and you are going to judge other people initially and primarily based on looks. While as humans, we initially judge people based on looks all the time, in traditional face-to-face -face interactions, we usually get to talk with, observe, or otherwise learn more about this person when we're with them. On dating apps, however, it's different. People swipe at a mile a minute, and there are thousands of people to swipe through, so their immediate gauge as to whether they'll swipe left or right on a person is how the person looks. First impressions are everything. It sounds shallow, but that's the nature of the beast. People can choose to read your bio and look at your other pictures and everything, but whether or not they decide to do that depends on how they judge you up front, which is usually based off your looks. I say all this to give you clarity into how dating apps operate, but also to tell you that using dating apps can very quickly devolve into just swiping right on people you find physically attractive and swiping left on people you find physically unattractive. Not only as a Christian are there a lot more factors that should go into play when looking for a partner besides level of physical attraction, but also very quickly you can start to objectify those you're swiping. It's very easy to forget that everyone is made in the image of God when you can disregard them with the swipe of a finger. 
I've caught myself doing this many times, and when it does happen, I have to take a step back and evaluate where my heart's at. Am I on this app to meet a godly partner, or am I here to play smash or pass? If it's the latter, I need to lay off the app for a while and spend some time with the Lord. I'm not saying that you have to devote X amount of time viewing every single profile that you come across in order to show them respect, because again, that's not necessarily the nature of dating apps. And if you're not physically attracted to someone you see, that's totally okay. But when the tendency on dating apps is to decide you're attractive and you're unattractive based off of looks alone, we need to be careful that as Christians, we're still honoring every person we see, even if it's just in our minds. Secondly, meeting people on dating apps is different than meeting people in real life because unlike in real life, people on dating apps are sometimes, if not often, talking to multiple people at the same time. Like I said, there are thousands of people on dating apps. So even if you only match with a fraction of those thousands and only a fraction of those matches actually lead to a conversation, you could still find yourself talking with a few different matches at once. What I'm getting at with this is the fact that you need to guard your heart when you match with someone and begin talking with them. If you're like me, then when you match with someone, there are like 50 different thoughts that run through your head. Is she the one? Could this be it? What do I say? And in reality, the two of you could hit it off, but also in reality, she could be hitting it off with three other matches as well. Until the two of you have gone out on several dates and communicated with each other whether or not you're still talking with other people on the app, the best practice is to guard your heart and have low expectations. Another thing that goes along with talking with multiple people at the same time on dating apps is ghosting. Sometimes after you match with someone, you can tell or they can tell that it just isn't a good fit. And so depending on how long the two of you have been talking, sometimes there's no good way to cut things off other than to just stop messaging them altogether. It's not ideal, but again, that's just the nature of the beast. If you've been talking with someone for a while, you've exchanged numbers and everything, and it isn't working out, then I don't think there's an excuse for ghosting and you should actually communicate with them how you feel. But in general, dating apps are about casting a wide net to see what you can catch, which sometimes involves having conversations that end abruptly. What I'm saying is that if you are on dating apps and you do get ghosted, don't take it personally and just move on. Another thing I'll say is that as a Christian on a dating app, you should not expect to get an overflow of matches. This literally could just be me, in which case I'm admitting to the world that I'm a loser who doesn't get matches. But in general, for Christians on secular dating apps, if you're swiping responsibly, you shouldn't expect to get hundreds of matches. If you make it clear on your profile that following Jesus is the number one priority in your life, and I hope it is, you should not expect to get as many matches as someone who doesn't say those things. For a lot of people, when they see the word Jesus in a bio, they immediately swipe left. They just think, nah. And likewise, as a Christian looking for an equally yoked partner, you're gonna end up swiping left on a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. Whether it's because they explicitly say they're not a Christian, all their pictures are them partying and drinking, they say they're 420 friendly, or whatever other red flags that pop up. This isn't to say that there aren't any Jesus-loving people on dating apps, because there are, but it is to say that you're gonna have to dig through the dirt to find the gold. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, a lesson I learned about dating apps the hard way is the fact that 99.999% of the people you meet on them will be strangers, or rather, people whom you have no mutual friends with and no history with yourself. I know you're thinking, duh, and some of you are thinking, and the problem with that is, in which case, it's not a problem. If you're all about new beginnings with new people, then dating apps should be right up your alley. But if you're a slow to trust introvert like myself, then heed my cautionary tale. Basically, a few years ago, I met a girl, a Christian girl, on Bumble, we went out on a few dates, and the next thing you know, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. It all happened very fast, and I quickly realized that concerning both the relationship and my use of dating apps in general, maybe I had rushed into things. She had a lot of family and friends in the area, so it felt like every weekend we were getting dinner with someone new who she wanted to introduce me to, which, as an introvert, was very draining. Additionally, as we spent more and more time together, I learned more and more about her. And not even learned more like I learned that she was a drug addict or something crazy, but just learned more about her in general, like how she interacted with kids and how she spent her free time, how she handled stress. The sorts of things you can only learn about someone with time. The more that I'd learned about her though, the more that I realized how much there was about her that I didn't know. And with a few yellow slash red flags popping up, I began to feel very overwhelmed by the unknowns. It came to a point where I realized 
I'm spending so much time trying to get to know so many different people with someone who I don't even necessarily know. And I realized that it would be hard for our relationship to progress because ultimately, I didn't know enough about her, nor had I known her long enough to give her my full trust like she deserved. I was exhausted, I was overwhelmed, and in the end, I decided to break up with her. It was very sad and messy, so I hope you can learn from my mistake. If you're like me and it takes you a long time to trust someone, especially to the point of being willing to date them, then understand that dating through dating apps is gonna take a lot of extra patience, communication, and mental energy on your part. Between meeting a whole crowd of new people, learning to trust your date as you go, and the normal excitement of a new relationship, I would just encourage you to take things very slow so that you get to know your date steadily over time and to not be so quick to put labels on the relationship like I did. I know these factors aren't exclusive to meeting people through dating apps, but for me, literally everyone in my life, all my close friends and family, began their relationship with their significant other only after being friends with them first. So my expectation was that dating someone I met online would be just like dating a friend or someone I've known for a while, because that's the only kind of dating I'd ever seen. But in reality, that's not the case. There are just different expectations and different dynamics when meeting people through dating apps. You're gonna find yourself in a lot of new circles and you're gonna to have to learn to trust others, in my opinion, rather quickly. I wish I knew that when I first started using dating apps because it would have affected how I use them. So I hope now that you understand it too. I'm rambling at this point, so let's move on. Now I just wanna talk about and share my experience with each specific dating app that I've used, which are Bumble, Hinge, and Upward. Technically, I was on Tinder way back a few years ago, but that was more just to see what it was all about, and I never actually tried to meet anybody through it, so I don't have anything to say about it. The dating app that I've used the most is Bumble. Bumble is pretty similar to Tinder as far as its layout. You can upload pictures, write a bio, answer a few questions, but what makes it different is the fact that whenever you match with someone, the girl always has to message first. I like Bumble because it's one of the most popular dating apps on the market, so it has a pretty big user base. You can connect your Instagram and Spotify profiles to your account so others can see those, which is fun. There are also prompts on it that you can answer to quickly let other people know more about you, such as your height, how active you are, if you're looking for a relationship, your love language, and your religion. And it's nice because from there, you can filter your feed by these prompts. So if you only wanted to see people who labeled themselves as Christian, you can. But while that's a nifty feature, I will say that for a lot of people on the app, they say they're a Christian as flippantly as they say they're a Scorpio. It's more of just a box to fill. So don't assume that just because someone says they're a Christian on Bumble, that they prioritize their relationship with Jesus. Like I said earlier, I would include mentioning how you're a follower of Jesus in your bio, and then look for others who do the same. That just shows an additional level of intentionality and it's a green flag. I've gone out on dates with a few girls I've matched with on Bumble and they've all gone well. Besides my experience that I just talked about, which had more to do with me and less to do with the app, I would say that Bumble is a decent option if you're thinking about getting on dating apps. Again, you're going to swipe left through a lot of people to find the ones worth swiping right on, but it can be worth it. The next app I used is Hinge. Full disclaimer, I never actually went out on any dates with the girls I met on Hinge, but I still use the app for a little while, so I can talk about it. Hinge is different from other dating apps because you don't just swipe through people. You have to actually press a button if you're not interested in someone, and if you are interested in someone, you can like a picture of theirs or send them a message without actually matching with them first. It changes up the formula that a lot of dating apps follow, and their slogan is designed to be deleted, so the app focuses more on helping its users find relationships than just hookups, which I like. It's also got a decently large user base, so it's similar to Bumble and the fact that you're gonna have to search through a lot of people to find the ones who love Jesus, but again, the hard work can pay off. I know a few people who have met their significant other through Hinge, so I'm sure they'd recommend it. The last dating app that I've used is Upward formerly known as Faith or FTH. The app is basically Tinder for Christians. The layout is the same, pictures in a bio, with the addition of a statement of faith where you can say what your faith means to you, as well as the ability to specify your denomination. The app is really growing in popularity, which is great because I like it and I think there's a market for it. But as it stands, the user base is still pretty small, which is its downfall. It's great to not have to search so hard to find a godly person on the app, but when they're all literally 300 plus miles away, other issues arise. I went out on a few dates with one girl I met on Upward and things were going well, but we lived two hours apart from each other and we quickly realized that between both of our busy schedules, 
The distance just wasn't going to allow things to work. Some people can make long distance relationships work, but going back to the point I made earlier, I contend that it's harder to do when the two of you don't have some sort of history together already. Getting to know someone long distance is hard, and unfortunately, a lot of the people you'll meet on Upward at this point are going to be several hours away from you. The user base just isn't big enough yet. This all wouldn't be such a huge issue if you could filter by distance on Upward like you can on other dating apps, but you can't, which has been one of the chief complaints of the app since its inception. Overall, I recommend the app. I like what it's doing. Just know that if you choose to use it and you match with someone on it, you should be prepared to travel a bit to meet them. All right, well, there you have it, folks. My hot slash not so hot take on Christians using dating apps. I wish I had a video like this back when I was thinking about getting on dating apps. So I hope I said something that was helpful for you. Also, my man Sam over at Bold Faith Productions made a video about his experience with dating apps. So if you have not watched his video yet, you should check it out. Let me know in the comments if you're using dating apps, if you're thinking about using dating apps or any questions you might have. Also, please like this video and subscribe as I have more videos on the way. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all very much and I will see you in the next one.